the person who is going to be taking us um, through this session, his name is Donald. He's a general manager at VUCA. And so Donald, I'm going to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and take over the session uh, as my role will be to moderate and I hope we'll have a beautiful one. Take over. Thank you very much, uh, Agatha, for this amazing session and the opportunity to speak to the Wealth Tribe. Like Agatha said, my name is Donald Kimathi. I'm the general manager uh, of VUCA at Econ Investment Management Limited. Econ Investment Management Limited is uh, licensed by Capital Markets Authority as a REIT manager. Um, and then generally, in terms of Econ, who is Econ? Econ has been established for over 20 years as a premier developer, operator, and now asset manager of the largest uh, real estate uh, rental housing scheme in Eastern Central Africa. What uh, the, a brand that we currently know as Quetu Student Residences. And with that, I'd like to welcome you to today's session where we're going to, to learn and, and, and ask questions and uh, you know, learn about this important topic of uh, retirement planning, or rather about how to plan for the perfect retirement. So before I start, um, I like putting things in, into perspective and, and I like speaking out of my own experiences. So the first one was um, you know, roughly, you know, roughly 22 years ago, which is a while back when I was 16 years, uh, just about there, um, my mother, uh, you know, had had a, a medical emergency which required uh, surgery. And I remember the surgery had been done on a Tuesday. So for the subsequent three days, we were visiting the hospital, you know, to just visit with her and, 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 and see how she was doing, encourage her and so on and so forth. You know, on the third day, which was a Thursday, um, my father calls me, uh, you know, at the dinner table after, after dinner that evening, mom was still in the hospital, and he pulls, out, he pulls out a letter, okay, in the middle of all this emergency, and that letter, uh, I'll never forget, you know, uh, tells my father, you know, thank you very much for your service for this number of years, and uh, effective today, uh, you'll no longer be an employee of the government of Kenya. So my dad had been you know, serving in the Ministry of Education for many, many years, starting 1980s. And, and in the year 2000, he was unfortunately retrenched. Now, um, many things ran through my mind. One was, you know, where we were, we were living, lifestyle. You know, we were going to good schools, myself and my two siblings. Mom was in hospital. It was, it was a very difficult moment uh, in my life and the life of those around me, especially my father and mother. So long story short, um, after retrenchment and the period before my dad got to access his pension, that period was extremely difficult. Luckily, my mom was also working and was able to support, although with a lot of lifestyle changes, including you know, delayed school fees and things like that, which really embarrassed me in school at that point and at that age. And, and that, and I'll always remember how hard you know, mom had to work and then the subsequent period through which, you know, the struggles that my dad had to go through before he was able to find something meaningful, a business to set up and, 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 and do. Eventually, he was able to recover and, and get us to school and, and, and retire you know, honorably. So that is one story. And, and that has lived with me for as long as I've, you know, I've lived since that period. The second one was when I, when I just started working and I just left uni, as I know, barely 24, very excited about life and about to start uh, you know, my banking career at that point. And one year into my career, um, I remember it was, it was, you know, it was a cold December in, in 2008. And some of my colleagues were called to the head office. I was working for a branch then. And they came back with the news that um, effective that day, they were no longer employees of the organization. Okay, they had been retired early. Okay, according to the definitions then. Now, um, I have followed the lives and times of some of those colleagues and the outcomes, you know, thereof. And, and I can, you know, as far as I can remember, three of my friends really struggled because they were still young. They were in their late 30s, early 40s, and they really struggled to, you know, adjust to retirement and, and get to see their, their, their families through schools, continue living their lives. There are some who are lucky. They had plans in place, proper retirement play, plans in place, and they, they got out, started their businesses, started doing what they really liked to do. And they were very, very successful, uh, you know, from that point on. So that that those two stories form the basis of what we're about to learn today, because we're going to learn a lot of things and some of the statistics out there, redefining what retirement is and what really means to us. But before we get there, I like lo looking at the human life cycle because 
um, for us, especially um, those people who are in the age of uh, you know, 25 to 40, we, we plan with the idea that we're going to live forever, okay? With the idea that, you know, we're going to work forever, we're going to be strong forever. You know, we're going to have these resources and get promotions and grow and, and get customers and so on and so forth in our businesses forever. However, the truth is between the age of one and 24 years, okay, you can look at your screen. Um, that's the age when, that's a foundation age. You're, you're born, okay, you're fully dependent on your mother for various things, including moving around, eating, um, you know, using the washroom. At that point, you're fully dependent on your parents. As you grow, then you're able to speak, you're able to express yourself. Eventually, you can, you can, you can, you can talk, learn, and read. You go to school, now you're, you're not fully dependent because you can, you can feed yourself as much as you're being, the food is bought by your parents. You can, you can read, you can see some directions, you're able to, to walk to school and back and so, forth, so on and so forth. And you go through uh, the education system between the you know, year one when you're born to 24, you're going through you know, primary school, through high school, learning about life's experiences, about expectations, about nuances, about values, about what you'd want to be in the future. At this point, we are extremely aspirational. We have our entire life ahead of us. So you can, if you ask a kid who's between one to you know, five years, they'll tell you they want to be those things that they see regularly. Okay, a policeman, you know, a driver, you know, a teacher, a, a nurse, a health practitioner, your whole life is ahead of you. By the time you hit 24 years, then at that point, you have to start thinking about life planning because you, you're, you're relatively done with school, you finished uni or college, and you're looking for work. If you're lucky, you start working at the age of 24, 25. And from that point on, you're dependent on yourself. You know, at age 24, probably not fully dependent, but now you're, you're sort of becoming dependent on yourself. So the, 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 the age of between 24 and 40 years would ideally be what would be called the life planning stage. You're, you're a young adult, you now have some income, uh, a bit of income, you're able to make certain decisions, start living for, you know, by yourself, uh, start achieving some of the life goals you put for yourself. Some people will, will get their first come, their first, their first home, they will start dating you know, with a view to getting married. By the time you, you hit 40 years, now you're thinking about bigger things. You've been working for 15, 16 years, uh, and, and those are the most productive years of your life. You're, they're the most energetic life, uh, you know, years of your life. You can run around, respond to requests at the office, work long hours, and you have minimal to no you know, health complications. You, know, you, can, you can party all night and, and go to work the following day and still uh, be useful. That, that's a, that, that, that is usually called you know, the golden age, you know, the age within which you know, there's a lot of abundance of energy, of resources, of bonuses, of how much you can make. So we tend to plan with that in mind that we're going to be getting increments uh, all through our lives. We're going to, getting, to be getting all these bonuses all through our lives. Then when you hit 40, something happens. You now, uh, for the bulk majority of people, you probably have a young family. You have to start thinking beyond yourself. You have to start thinking beyond your own clothes, your own, you know, your own fun. You have to st start thinking about your kids' education. Uh, what, is going to, what is going to happen for the next 24 years that these kids are going to be with you, uh, that, that they're going to be fully dependent on you. But you also have, um, you know, you also have your eyes set on something else, retirement, okay? And retirement has been, you know, traditionally defined, and we're also going to look at a few more definitions today. But beyond retirement, you're also thinking about succession planning. So um, what am I, what, what, is my, my, what is my legacy going to be about? What am I going to be known for, okay? by the time I decide to retire or if I have to wait up until 60 years to retire. So once you hit 60 years, um, at that point, you're a senior citizen, okay? Um, you are expected to have done most of the things uh, you needed to do in your life, to run around, to, to get to new, meet new friends, uh, when you are healthy, when you have the energy to run around, to make connections, to make money. Uh, so so those, those are the societal expectations. Let's just look at income versus age gra uh, you know, graph when you think about the things we've talked about. So when, when on the left, um, you know, uh, the y-axis, if you look at it, that represents income. And then on the x-axis, you have the age. If you look at the age between when you're born, when you're zero to 25, you're fully dependent on someone else. You're someone else's problem, 100%. If you want to eat, you'll ask your mother or father. If you want to go to school, you'll ask your mother or father. If you want to go out for a movie with friends, 
it's somebody has to fund that kind of a thing. And then once you hit 25 and you're lucky you have a job, then you hit what is called the wealth accumulation phase. What that means is that you have, you're very strong, you, you're able to run around, you can apply yourself fully. You do not have as many you know, dependents at, at this point. And between the age of 25 and whatever age you decide to, decide to, to, to retire, and, and let's put at that between probably 55 and 60, you are accumulating one. This is a point where you're getting money, there's an income which is coming in, so you're able to spend, save, and invest once you hit your retirement age, and in this case, if you work with 55 to 60, then you enter the spending phase. And, and this is the phase where now you start spending what you have accumulated over the years that you've been working. And those years are limited. Okay, certain things happen when you, when you clock a certain age, you know, all other factors held constant. One is you'll not be able to run around as you used to be able to. You're not able to, you know, go on very long assignments and health complications check in depending on how you led your lifestyle when you were younger and as you go along with life then you go back to being a dependent at some point at some point in your life dependent not not just on money aspects but also dependent because you need somebody to take care of you you need somebody to help you move you need somebody and because at that point you're old and and, and wary now this is this is what traditionally we have known uh, to be the plan to be the story around retirement so let's look at some, some statistics from some of the research and uh, market research we've done. And, and that uh, some of the statistics shows that you know, pension covers only 20 to 30% of your life, lifestyle needs. So if in your mind, you're hoping that you're going to work very hard and uh, you know, your employer or you know, the government is going to put aside a pension that you know, covers you know, your needs, then you need to rethink that position because whatever, if you're able to work to retirement, your pension is only going to cover 20 to 30 percent of your life lifestyle needs and you have to think about what constitutes your lifestyle these are things you do from the time you wake up to the time you sleep over a period of time okay from you know meeting to friends transportation the fact that you will need to watch some tv you might need to pay for that you will need to pay for your electricity so utilities you need to eat um you will need a decent uh, you know health care plan because at that point then there's more health complications that come along. So actually, uh, your, your retirement needs are equal or slightly more, to, more than what you will need today. Not in terms of you know, going out or the expenditures you incur, but the fact that there's other extraneous expenditures which require your attention and expenditure. Uh, and, and, and we learn what happens if those ones are not catered. Okay? Um, the other statistic is that 90% of employment employed Kenyans are not saving for retirement. And the primary reason is we don't see retirement uh, you know, pertaining to us. We think retirement is a distant, is in the distant future, is an idea that all people should think about, has nothing to do with my lifestyle today, has nothing to do with how I'm saving, investing, and how, what I'm putting aside. So 90% of people are not thinking about that. Again, there's consequences to this, and the outcome, for sure, and, and we learn this about this as we move along is, if you look at um, and, you know, the various generations that have existed from when we got independence up until now, some of us are still having to you know, uh, you know, take part in what is called a black tax, meaning that you have to send some money home because your parents are no longer working, the pension is just a fraction of what they're earning, they require to go to hospital, they, they'll need certain amounts of money, and therefore we end up being someone else's pension plan. The impact of that is then we are not able to save and invest as we should because we have to finance you know, the pensioners' lifestyles. Another thing is 40% of retired people um, are grappling with mental health issues. This is a very serious issue. And, and the primary reason for that is you're out there, you still have to eat, you still have to live in the house, you still have to move around, socialize, do the things that you know, normal human beings do. You still have to go to church and, and, and pay a tithe, make contributions to you know, friends, funeral, and so on and so forth. You still want to go on holiday. You're still a human being. The only thing is that your age has advanced. So these things uh, are putting a lot of people into depression and are causing, you know, causing uh, mental health issues. The other important statistics is that 70% of people don't have an income on retirement. And people walk to retirement expecting miracles to happen. Okay? I worked very hard. I was known for something. So people are going to give me money or something like that. I worked very hard. Uh, my kids will support me in retirement. Then you end up becoming a challenge to your kids because then they're not able to continue accumulating their wealth. Um, 
Another thing to think about is that a good percentage of retired people um, spend most of retirement savings dealing with health conditions that were caused by or accelerated by poor retirement planning. That's a fact. Uh, some of, uh, and this is, this is um, a lot of feedback we've gotten from people in, in, our, in, in, in the health sector, is that a lot of challenges that people who are in retirement or who are nearing retirement are experiencing are actually uh, you know, challenges which can be avoided by planning in advance so that you have plenty, you have enough to take care of yourself and those people around you. And therefore, you do not preoccupy yourself thinking about what, what tomorrow is going to you know, serve on you. Um, another important point is a lot of people say the people who are not saving or investing for retirement are people who probably are not educated, do not understand you know, what retirement is. But the truth is highly educated Kenyans with very high income levels, many times retire miserably with majority of them leaving their families in serious debt. Because we live for now, okay? We forget that we, we are going to live probably a third of our life out of retirement, more than a third of our life, depending on what time you retire, depending on how you retire. So you have to seriously think about that life because at that point, uh, there will be no going back. Uh, you, you'll be retired, you have to think about the daily things you need to do and there has to be an income to support that. So you have to have that in mind. Um, you also have to think about the impact of that as you approach retirement, if you will set you know, 40 years to be your retirement age and we'll define this as we go along, or whether it's 60, you have to think about what then uh, you know, engaging in excessive debt is going to do for your retirement or how that is going to leave your financial position. So another interesting uh, you know, statistic is that out of the entire investing population, approximately 63% are ladies or female gender and only 37% are men or male gender. So if you look at the attendance of the, this webinar, that would also explain to you, you know, why. So this is redefining retirement dependency. And, and, and as men, especially gentlemen who are attending this, this session, we need to think about what we need to do about this so that, you know, a trend which has been coming up where we are worrying about the kids are taking the mother to the States and leaving us here. That does not, you know, recur. We need to think about seriously investing even as we think about the current, you know, expenditures or what we're doing currently with our money. So a, a few more uh, facts. So assuming that people, the majority of people retire at 60, 47% of them will depend on relatives. You can pause and just think about that. Just about five out of 10 people will fully depend on their relatives. You will be making those calls and your relatives here in Nairobi do not want to see those calls. The same way you do not want to see some of those calls from our country. So that's a very damning statistic. We, we, we need to really pause and think about that. 31% will be seeking contracts or will be saying, you know, I'm still young, I need to continue working. And the reason is they're not able to stop working at that point. They're not able to fully depend on themselves if they stopped working, despite the fact that you've retired. 16% will have inadequate retirement savings and, and, and then 6% will be financially independent. Only 6%, just about 6% going by the current trends. So that is something that we need to, to, to stop and think about and how this would potentially affect us, our parents or people around us, our friends and, and the people we socialize with, whether in church, at work, you know, in our social circles. This, is, this, this statistic speaks of you know, the attitude as Kenyans that we've taken towards retirement plan. And that's why today's session is very important. So what really is retirement? Because I've talked about retirement quite a bit. And uh, you know, um, we've, 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 it has been defined in the past you know, using very many um, uh, explanations. So if you look at the old school definition, um, retirement is defined as you know, the act or the fact of leaving one's job or ceasing to work after attaining a certain age, mostly 60, 60 to 65 years. Okay. So in, in my opinion, and, and, and us at, uh, no, as, as a team here at Buka, we, we think that definition is flawed for a couple of reasons, three reasons. The first one is the fact that the life expect expectancy in Kenya is, is 64.6 year, years for, for men and just about 69.3 years for women. Meaning that if you waited until 60 years to retire and then enjoy your life, then you'd only enjoy your life for an average of four to nine years. So that's not a plan. You can live a full, purposeful and meaningful life and, and retire as and when you want it. Okay, so that's, 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 that's what we think about retirement. The second one is a traditional pension income. What your employer and state um, help you to put together 
will only cover just about you know 20 to 30 percent of your lifestyle needs so the result is what we spoke about four out of ten retirees are grappling with depression and other mental health issues the second one is you will be an enforcer of black tax on your children you become fully dependent on relatives and other people and friends okay when you had an opportunity to 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 retire happily so the other, the third reason why we think that definition is flawed is it's proven that meaningful, uh, you know, meaningful work or doing what one life, uh, what what one likes, gives life purpose and meaning. So the idea of stopping work, therefore, doesn't make sense. Okay, especially work that you enjoy or things that you enjoy doing. Okay, if you enjoy speaking in forums, if you enjoy giving advice, if you enjoy, you know, singing, if you enjoy um, counseling people, if you enjoy traveling. Uh, you know, as a, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't wait, okay? It should not wait or it should not rely on, on and, you know, it should not rely on the fact that you, you, you need to be employed for you to do those things. So what you stop doing when you retire is relying on employment or active work to eke out a living. That, that's, that's what we think about retirement. So uh, if you look at, you know, history and, and you, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of examples around all around us about people who found purpose or did things in retirement which became very, very successful. One quick example, because we know these brands, is, you know, Harlan Sanders. Uh, this is the founder of KFC because a lot of us you know, consume KFC products. Hi, Donald. Uh, yes. A quick one. Uh, which slide are you meant to be showing? What you're showing right now it is only displays a uh -huh, Yeah, what is really is retirement uh okay. yes yes there's 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 reason for that <laughs> okay <laughs> perfect yes yes i will define <laughs> and, and now you've gone ahead of me so the okay. final the final the fine uh, you know I, i've mentioned Helen sanders the 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 founder of kfc um we also know about the brand mcdonald mostly from movies and for those who have traveled you probably have interacted with that brand in us europe uh, middle east and many other places so ray Kroc founded mcdonald's when he was 52 way after retirement. And before I, I, I go to Ray McCroc, you know, Alan Sanders was a military officer before he started KFC. So he'd already retired from his active work before he found his passion and purpose in life. The other one, uh, the third one I'd like to mention, you know, is Ariana Huffington, who founded the Huffington Post. This is, uh, you know, a world famous, renowned uh, blog. Ariana Huffington founded uh, the Huffington Post when uh, she was 55. And to date, um, Huffington Post is one of, you know, most relied on one of the most famous blogs uh, worldwide. So um, if we go to re what really is retirement? So our definition is it is having enough savings and investments to afford the lifestyle you want for yourself without the need to actively earn an income. And you can pause to think about that. So, and, and, and therefore, that, that tells you that retirement is about wealth, not about age. It's a point at which you have accumulated enough wealth to support yourself without having to work on a regular basis. So this, 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 this new definition changes everything that we know about retirement. It means that even as we, even as we live our lives, even our working lives, whether you're, you're doing a business, whether you're in employment, you have to you have to consciously work with a number and that number will be how much you want to earn or how much you want to have accumulated by the time when you're retiring and whatever you've accumulated is able to then passively generate an income that will sustain your lifestyle and afford you the freedom to do the things that you really like to do uh, with your life so that is really what you know perfect retirement means so with that we can probably uh, go to the next slide uh, which will cover three proven steps to a happy retirement. So how do you retire happily? So the first one is um, plan for your retirement investment. You can take notes, uh, although we'll share, this, you know, we'll share these slides with those people who have attended and also the, the video recording uh, for, for, for those people who would like to probably have a look at the presentation later. So the first one is plan for your investments. And when you're planning for your investment, you have the first, the first thing you need to do is decide a retirement date. This is when. When do you want to retire? For instance, if, if I'm 36 today and I want to retire in, 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 when I'm 45, it means I have nine years to retire. So that is a very important fact. It's a very important starting point. So 
once you've decided the retirement date, so, and, and as part of this definition uh, that we put out forth, is, it, it, it should be a date by when you, you would like to have accumulated enough wealth to cover your living expenses. The second, the second bit is set your retirement goals, okay? How much will you require by the time you retire? How much will you require? What, what amount of wealth will you require by the time you're looking to retire? So, um, and when, you, when you're doing those goals, it has to be aligned to specific goals. And those goals ideally would be medium term to long term goals. It can include things like, you know, I want to buy my retirement home, you put a number to that retirement home. It's four or five million shillings, put a number to it. I'd, I'd like to go on a cruise holiday every year with, with my spouse, you know, after retirement, put a number to that, what that would be. Um, I'd like to get into a vocation or a fulfilling hobby, okay? Or, or I'm passionate about something. I want to start singing. I have a talent, but I've never deployed it. I want to start playing golf during my retirement. Put a number on that. Another way of looking at it is um, explore the income method, meaning that, if I'm earning 100,000 shillings right now, I can also put a number to what I would ideally want to be getting as an income every month. Is it 100,000 shillings? Is it 80,000 shillings? That, that means it's 80% of your current income. Is it 120,000 shillings? Meaning that you probably would be spending more than you're spending right now. Put a number to that because then that will help you to work backwards towards what you would be contributing uh, on a monthly basis. Then, the third thing is you need to take stock of your current financial position and why, why, that, that, uh, why that, is, that is important is because um, if you look at uh, some, of the, some, uh, some of the things you think about when you're making uh, you know, investment plans or you're making generally retirement plans is that the starting point is you have a certain amount of assets, you have a certain amount of liabilities, liabilities, assets will be uh, you know, uh, you know uh, those financial things that generate you income, okay? And they grow in value. It can be your house. It can be investments you've made in bonds. It can be a pension plan. Um, it can be a business, which is generating income. Um, uh, uh, liabilities would be things like a loan, okay? And these are things then which, which eat, eat into your income or you have to make regular payments to. Assets bring income. Liabilities take away income. So that, when you, when you have a picture of that, it gives you a net position of where you are in terms of assets and liabilities. Then you also have to look at what your current income is, because your current income then will determine, will determine, uh, will determine how much you're able to contribute uh, to your retirement plan. Then you also need to determine how much do you need to save and invest every month. Once you've decided a retirement date, you have set your retirement goals, uh, you've taken a stock of your current financial position. The, the, the second question would be how much how much then should I think about? Should I, should I put aside every month? And that, that, uh, that, that, that question is very, very important. So um, the question of how much is, is, is you know, different from one person to another. And, and like I explained it, because we all have different aspirations. You all have different things you want to do when you retire. And we all, we all have um, uh, you know, uh, different aspirations about the lifestyle we want to lead uh, by the time uh, you, get, you, get, you get to uh, your retirement age. So um, the second one is plan. Uh, and when we talk about this is plan for retirement risks. And I'll explain which one these are. So the first one, uh, the first risk you, you face when, when you're retired or when you're looking at retirement planning is inflation risk. And that's a risk that the cost of goods and services will you know, rise faster than your planned income. So how can you mitigate uh, this risk um, even as you plan? So one of it is having or investing in a well-balanced portfolio ensuring that the returns that you get out of your entire investment, um, the returns that are coming out of that are above inflation. So that, you know, in future, you're able to afford goods and services at the price, at the price that they will be in future. The second, the second risk you look at is, uh, you, you run is the longevity risk. So that's a risk of that you'll run out of money due to a long life. We all want to lead a long, fulfilling life, only that we, the bulk of us do not plan for that long life. So if you do not plan appropriately, the chances are that you will run out of money as you continue li living your life. And at some point you're going to become a dependent on people. So how do you mitigate that risk? So save and invest at least 20% of your income uh, uh, at, uh, regularly. That, that means that you will accumulate enough money to cover you for whatever period of time 
uh, that you're potentially going to leave above uh, your retirement age. Another risk you look at is, is um, the household uh, shock uh, risk. That means um, you might lose a, you know, a spouse or they might you know, you know, enter into cognitive decline due to health issues. And that means they will not be able to contribute to the income pot that is coming to your family during retirement. So um, as, as, as a way of advice, we normally to advise that you plan your retirement without your spouse, spouse in mind. Pla plan your retirement as an individual. Think about what impact the absence or loss of income of the other spouse would do to you and therefore plan with that in mind. Another important one that we need to think about is, is, is a health risk, obviously due to advanced age and the expenses due to health will rise and therefore impair your quality of life since you'll be spending a lot of money on health. Either that or you become a problem to other people because they have to raise that money to take care of you in terms of health. So in terms of our one, we normally advise that you live meaningfully. So when you're young, um, eat well, exercise, avoid excesses, live your life meaningfully so that in, in future you do not pick health complications that are made during your youth. Take an insurance, um, a medical insurance early. Um, uh, and, and the reason for that is you have to start a, a relationship with uh, insurance companies Ali, it's not possible that you wait until you're 50 or 55 when you have all these complications and then go to, uh, to an insurance company and then expect to get a proper cover. Most of the times there will be a lot of ex exclusions which disadvantage old people. But if you've been uh, you know, uh, you know, continuously um, taking out covers, then the insurance uh, company will have your history and they're able to continue uh, providing these services as you age. So the next, the next uh, risk you need to think about is spending risk. This means that you're spending too much too soon. And it happens a lot, especially when people retire and they take out their lump sum. So you have all these fancy ideas about things you need to do um, at that point. And then according to statistics, in two, three years, you run out of that money. And then you become fully de dependent on other people um, as, you, as you go along. So some, part of the advice that we give to people is take lump, lump sums only when you have planned investments, okay? And planned investments means that you have, you're, you're getting into investments that do not require you to actively put energy or time into them. And, and these are safe investments. As you age or when you're in retirement, you do not want to take on excessive risk or risk wiping out your entire you know, retirement uh, fund. So get into things that you understand, get into things of low or moderate risk, but also if you take out lump sum, put it in things that you know how they run. Put it in things that do not uh, risk your entire you know, uh, retirement pot. Uh, you can also take annuities. Um, for those people who understand annuities, this is, this is a product that is uh, offered by insurance uh, where you can invest or rather put your money as, as, as a policy and then you, you continue getting you know, consistent amounts of money every month, okay? So, um, Annuities have their own advantages in terms of ensuring that you have a regular income, which, which you obtain over the period of life uh, that you went when you're leaving after um, retirement, but also having that money invested in many other investment options that give you a regular income over time, but also grow the value of the investment to ensure that you'll not run out of your investment is uh, retirement money is important. Um, another Important risk is, is called the market sequence risk. And this is simply the danger that the timing of your withdrawals from your retirement account will negatively impact uh, returns and thereby reducing the amount of money that will be available for you in future. For this one, we normally advise in anything, just as in life, you have to have uh, you know, professionals on your, on your side. We normally advise that you, you have you know, a personal financial advisor, you know, just like the Wealth Tribe, people who you know, consistently speak to you or advise you on how to make money moves, when to withdraw from your pension, and what to invest in and when. And, and, and that, that, that stands to benefit you and that and you, and will ensure that you're covered uh, in terms of those risks. Let's look at, uh, sorry, how to execute your retirement plan. So you already, you already plan for your retirement plan. You already know how much you want to achieve by, end of the, by, by the time you retire. You already know what your goals are. You already know how much you should contribute every month. The next thing is save and invest every month as per your plan. It's that basic. You have to start small and do it consistently and build discipline in it, but do it consistently. So, um, and how do you invest money? So you have to determine your retirement sources of income. 
um, you have to determine your retirement sources of income. So, and how do you do that? Um, there are many, there are many retirement sources of income. Uh, the ones that we commonly know of is 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 probably uh, the government-sponsored schemes. Um, a lot of people know about NSSF, but if you look at NSSF, the maximum that you can contribute in NSSF is two thousand one hundred and sixty. If you work backwards without interest and hoping that you save for thirty years, you save for twelve months over thirty years, you will only have accumulated seven hundred and seventy-seven thousand six hundred. Okay. And I posit that that money will not be able to take you through another 30 years of, of, of your retirement life. So it's, it's a good start. It's, it's, it's a mandatory saving by law, but uh, that will not cover you from invest, you know, retirement challenges. If you only invest in NSSF, just know that you're going to be one of those who's going to be you know, vigorously taking part of, you know, in black taxes or you know, who's going to make your children your retirement plan. The second one is uh, employer-sponsored schemes for those people who are employed. A lot of times, uh, you'll be you know, saving 5 to 10% of your income, monthly income, over a 20, 30-year-old period, assuming that you're going to work for that period of time. Um, and that is likely to give you just about the same amount of you know, cover, 10 to 20% of your future monthly income. So that is still not enough. So we've looked at NSSF. It will not cover you adequately. Your five to ten percent employer-sponsored uh, scheme is not adequate. If you're contributing five to ten percent of your income, you know, even if it's going to be invested and it's going to, you know, multiply over a period of time, chances are you'll not be able to cover more than twenty to thirty percent of your today's needs. And like we agreed, you're still a human being. You still will want to socialize. You still want to go to church. You still want to hang out with your friends over coffee. You'll want to go on that holiday. You will have more time in your hands to do things. So if you do not have money or capital to start doing those things that you want to do with yourself, then it will be very hard. So an employer-sponsored scheme, very important. Um, take part in it, but it does not cover you, uh, you know, completely. Another way of, you know, another source of income can be, um, a, 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 you know, can be personal pension plans. Many, many, there's many companies approved, approved by, um, excuse me, there's, there's many companies approved by Retirement Benefit Authority, and, and, that, and that allows you then to now start your own pension plans, okay? To put money aside, aside uh, for, for your future. Now, personal pension plans have um, certain advantages, and, and one of those is uh, tax relief up to 20,000 shillings a month, meaning that up to 240,000 shillings, you have some tax relief if you're saving that money in your pension plan. But this is a good place to also save for or, or invest uh, for, for your retirement plan. Right. Let's look at annuities. So there's many companies which are approved by IRA, uh, Insurance Regulatory Authority, Retirement Benefits Authority, and Capital Markets Authority, which can offer annuities. This is primarily insurance companies. And like I said, how annuities work is upon retirement, you're able to invest a lump sum, then keep getting a consistent um, income over the period of your life. So uh, that avoids one of the risks we talked about, where you, you take out money and then put it in things which are risky. In two, three years, you've, you've overspent, you've run out of you know, your retirement money, and then you have to become a dependent on other people. So um, um, annuities provide regular income after retirement. And, and however, uh, above, if, you're, if you're going to get above 25,000 shillings from your annuity, it means you'll be taxed at the prevailing income tax uh, rates. So you also have to think about that. Right. Um, the final one is investments. Okay. Um, and when, like we said, that if you only invest in the government sponsored schemes or your personal pension schemes or employer schemes, chances are you'll only cover probably 20 to 30% of your needs in the future. You also have to invest. You have to put this together with the investments. And these are good investments that will help you to save and put away money to, to enable you to retire as and when. So, so in investments, you can be as aggressive as you want to be in terms of how much you're, you're putting aside, depending on um, how far your investment, your, your retirement horizon is. If you're looking to retire in the next five years, you probably would need to put a bit more money. If you're looking to retire in the next 20, 30 years, it means that you need to uh, then work with that timeline in mind. And for investments in, in stocks, we normally say, you know, invest in stocks when you're young, between 25 years and, and 45 years, because Apart from dividends, there's a bigger play of capital gain, meaning that when these companies uh, are growing, 
then your investment will grow. And then in the future, apart from getting dividends, you're able to liquidate some of those stocks and put that money into things that you want to do. For instance, you wanted to build a retirement home, you're able to liquidate your stocks and then put that money into a retirement home. Um, so the advice is invest young, invest when you're young, and then hold for long term. If you're, if you're looking to invest in stocks uh, as a retirement plan, invest when you're young, hold for the long term. That's, that's, that's a rule. Keep adding you know, stocks, keep adding to the stocks that you're buying. Uh, buy reputable growth companies, buy, buy, buy good companies that are going to grow in the long term. And, 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 and a lot of times, you read, there's many places where you can get information, including from your stockbroker, about which companies you can buy and which companies you should hold for the long term. Right. Um, if you think about bonds, if you're thinking about bonds, um, uh, some are high yielding uh, bonds like infrastructure bonds. So these are really good to balance your portfolio and to get some punchiness in terms of returns in your investment portfolio. Um, so a place like infrastructure bonds are a good place and safe space to pack your... your, oh, nice. your yes. Just in case somebody is in this call and they've never heard the word bonds, what is a bond? Right. This, this, this is literally lending to the government. It's an investment where you know, the government takes your money and pays you an interest uh, every so often, depending on the type of bond. So that is one of the areas you can, you can invest your money in. I don't know if that's clear. Yes, yes, that is very clear, yes. <laughs> right. Um, so, however, for bonds, you have to watch out for inflation. So as you get your returns, because um, there's no capital gain or the value of your investment does not grow, the play is primarily the interest or the coupon payments that you get from, from, for, from bonds. So they're a good way to balance or get, get some interest, or get some good returns in your investment portfolio. However, you have to keep an eye on, on the fact that you're not getting a, you know, capital gain. You have to think about the impact of inflation on this over long term. The other one is you can think about real estate. And by real estate, I do not mean plots of land because plots of land are merely store of value. Uh, is, and, and if they're not very liquid, it's good to have um, you know, one or two plots of land because you can pack value there. But remember, during emergencies, liquidating those plots is extremely hard. And then over a period, you're going to be remain invested in those plots of land. There'll be no value coming to you. The only play will be you're hoping a road will pass by there one day and the value of that plot is going to, to grow you know, in terms of capital. So it's also um, there's also other risks you have to think about when you you're getting into rentals of, or, or uh, real estate. So you have to think about yeah you'll get regular income in terms of rent. You'll get capital gain because the value of that property will grow over time. Uh, you have to think about occupancy risk. Where are you going to get tenants? Okay, if you build up country, how much are those tenants willing to to pay as opposed to building in a more marketable area? So uh, additionally, uh, building rentals requires a huge outlay of capital. So you need to have to buy a full plot. You need to have all the money you need to to put up those units for you to be able to rent. You need to finish them, have all the amenities in place before you can start getting a return. However, you can also think about real estate investment trusts. These are uh, you know indirect real estate investments gives you the same you know, regular income, it gives you capital gain, and there's, there's, and there's occupancy because somebody else is thinking about that, but you literally become a landlord without, without owning the property. So um, that, they're, they're also professionally managed, so they cover you from you know, the risk that uh, you, you need to think about where you're going to get tenants and so on and so forth. The other thing you need to think about is when you're, doing your, when you're executing your retirement plan is determine the impact of taxes on your sources of income. Okay, um, I'll give a few examples. One, money markets for those people who have invested in money markets, which are short-term uh, instruments by a lot of insurance and, and, and asset management companies, is you, you can park your money in, in money markets. You're able to get you know, 10 to 12% uh, rate of interest in the short term. However, there's 15% uh, withholding tax charged on the return. So if, if, if you're getting 10% quoted as a rate of return, the actual effective return is 8.5%. Is, is so if you're looking to put your money in money markets for 20, 30 years, you have to think about the compounding effect of, that, of the tax that you're paying. Just think, of, think about um, if you put just about 100,000 shillings in, in, in money markets. If, if the promised rate of return is, is, is uh, you know, 10%, ideally that means you, you'd expect, you know, if you're investing 100,000, you, you, you'd expect 10,000 shillings in terms of a return every year. However, you'll only, you'll only get 8,500. So 1,500 uh, goes to taxes. 
So if you look at 1,500 uh, shillings over a period of 20 years and you compound this, then the impact of taxes on that will be huge. So when investing, because uh, for retirement, uh, because then the plan is medium term to long term, you have to put your investments in medium term to long term investments. Short term investments are good for packing money, getting a punch return for short term needs, but they're not really ideal for for retirement planning or for long term to medium term uh, investments. If you think, I think if you look at um, something like you know REITs, if if you if you get the same uh, rate quoted, there's only five percent withholding tax, so those are cleaner more tax efficient vehicles if you're, if you're looking to invest for medium term to long term. And also, um, you know, if you compare liquidity into how quickly you can get money, if you put your money in, in, in money markets, you get your money in 48 hours. For REITs, you, you need to go to Nairobi Securities Exchange, trade that REIT, so within seven days after a trading cycle, you get money. So there's a certain discipline you build when you invest in medium term to long term investments, if you're looking for medium term to long term retirement uh, you know, uh, planning needs. Right, so let's let's get into detail. Um, I'll take questions at the end of it, uh, since I've mentioned REIT. So what really is a REIT? So a REIT is a regulated collective investment entity that allows invest, investors to pull funds for acquisition of units or shares in a trust with the intention of earning income from a portfolio of real estate without directly owning the property. So if you look at rentals, and I need, I need 2 million shillings to buy land and build these rentals, uh, that's money you need to accumulate first. For REITs, we do not need to have accumulated that 2 million shillings. You can actually accumulate it in the rent. You can start you know, investing as little as you need to invest and then, and then build your retirement plan as you go along. So REITs are also not subject to corporate income taxes on distributed income. So that is the dividend payout. And REITs distribute at least 80% of their annual ordinary taxable income to investors, meaning that during retirement, you need regular uh, or periodic income coming from your investments. So this is one of those um, investments you can think about. Um, what are the types of REITs in Kenya? So there's development REITs uh, where investors pull funds together for purposes of developing real estate projects. So the play or how investors make money is when the properties are sold. So they make uh, money out of uh, you know, the difference between the selling price and what they use to construct. You have real estate in, uh, in income, uh, you know, income REITs, which are real estate investment trusts, which derive their revenue from rental properties. So investors gain through rental income and capital appreciation from the investments undertaken. And then you have Islamic REITs. These are income um, REITs, which um, primarily invest in income producing Sharia compliant uh, real estate. So which, which are the REITs registered in Kenya? You have three REITs, the Ilan Pari REIT, and then you have two REITs by Econ, so the Econ Development REIT and the Econ Income REIT. For, for today's purpose, uh, you'll limit yourself to the income REITs because this, these are the REITs which are positioned to individuals looking to invest for medium term to long term for purposes like retirement or wealth, wealth accumulation. So what, what are some of the benefits of REITs? Consistent income, I say that's very important, uh, especially when you're looking at retirement planning, because during retirement, you need your investments to be feeding, you need your investments to be paying you that monthly income you're, you're, you're currently earning. So REITs pay at least 80% of their income uh, to unit holders, and they pay dividends twice a year, ensuring that uh, there's consistent income, especially for one, when somebody retires or for companies which are looking for consistent income, it's a good tool to diversify your investments. Remember, I talked about various places where you can put your retirement money. Um, I talked about the fact that you should have an SSF. You should, if you're, 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 you're employed, you should participate in your employee, uh, you know, you know, in your employer schemes. Um, you should also have a personal pension plan. Okay. And then we talked about uh, the fact that you can think about annuities after retirement, where you can pack your lump sum so that you get you know, consistent income. You can also do that uh, with investments, which, which are credible, which are regulated like REITs, because once you invest there, then you'll be, you'll be earning your dividends every so often. And also you get capital gain, meaning that the value of your investment grows, which is very important during retirement because you're no longer getting active, you know, in income from active employment. So a REIT is a good way to, to diversify if you've invested in, in shares of companies, if you have invested in, in government bonds, uh, which we mentioned, if you've invested in you know, all other things, including rental houses. So this helps you to diversify and it gives you liquidity as and when you require your money. Uh, transparency, because you know exactly what you invested in, the properties are listed, you can clearly see them. Um, capital appreciation, when you're thinking about uh, retirement, uh, you have to think about power of compounding. You have to think about what those small incremental steps that you make every month, every year, have 
uh, the impact they have on your investment over long term and therefore uh, the impact they will have on how much you can access when you retire. So capital appreciation is important and when you invest in REITs which are high of high value like in the case of econ REITs which invest in econ, you know, student accommodation then that covers you from inflation over long term. You have to think about capital protection. When you're talking about retirement, do not put your money in risky uh, you know, investments. You have to think about that because you've already worked for your money. You want it to work for you, so you cannot afford to risk it. Um, capital protection is very important. So REITs are the only asset-backed uh, investments. When you think of it, they're the only investments which are backed by a building where the title is held by a trustee, meaning that you cannot lose your money. So very, very important. Uh, and I talked about what sort of risks you should get into when you retire. It should be low to medium risk investments. Uh, when you're young, you can take part in high risk investment because you can lose money and then start all over again. But when you're nearing your retirement plan or you're just about in retirement, you should not really uh, focus on high risk, high risk. Tax exemption, very important. When, when you think about the impact of taxation, and I just gave you an example, if you invested in short-term instruments, what, the, what that would portend for you, you have to think about the impact of tax over a long period of time. Okay, that the difference, uh, for instance, of a money market uh, instrument, which is a very good investment, especially for short term, and a REIT, for instance, the difference in taxation is a whole 10%. And that 10% of, of value over a period of 15, 10, you know, you know, 10, 15 years is, is, is a whole lot. So you have to think about how tax efficient the investments you put in place are and how they work in your favor. Liquidity. And why liquidity is important is sometimes you'll experience shocks during retirement where you need you know, a huge amount of money. And one of those would be health complications where you need you know, 2 million shillings because you need to do a surgery in India, God forbid. And at that point, the insurance companies are not really are averse to covering you because you're much older, you're advanced in age, and therefore um, they're, they're, not, they're not really willing to take that risk. So it means that you'll easily be able to liquidate your, your, your investment, get the 2 million bob that you require to do your, your, your surgery in India. However, if you had invested this money in land, you have a plot of land, it will be that much more harder to get value as quickly as you'd want in order for you to be able to, 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 to take part in your, in, your, in your surgery. The other important thing is professional management. Why professional management? When you're getting into retirement, uh, you know, when you get into retirement at whatever age, whether it's 30, 40, 50, 60, you are literally denoting that you want to earn your income passive. You want your investments to work for you. And that's why you work hard during your active employed uh, period or when you're actively in, engaged in your business to put money aside so that this money then in the future works for you. So professional management ensures that you have a team of you know, investment management uh, professionals, property managers looking at the properties, ensuring they're yielding correctly. They have, they're full of tenants. The occupancy is at the right level so that you're paid dividends. And they're also handling acquisition. Where are these properties, uh, you know, situated? And, and therefore, ensuring that you get a consistent return. So for income REIT, you have, uh, we have four properties in the income REIT. We have the Kwetu Wilson View, we have Kwetu Ruaraka, Kwetu Jogorod, and the newest property which has been added to the uh, income REIT is Kwetu Parklands. The implication of this is that there's more income in terms of rental income that will be distributed to, uh, to investors, the ones who are already in the REIT. In the future, we plan to put all the three properties that you see in the development REIT, Abadea Heights, Salingam, and USIU in the income REIT. So the best time to get into the REITs is and just as in stocks because this is an equity instrument or it's an instrument that you literally take shares of, of, of an investment entity. The best time to get into REITs is early because as you continue adding properties, the unit price grows. When you rolled out the, the Econ income REIT, it was you know, launched uh, in February of last year, 20 shillings. It's now at 20.88 shillings. As we continue adding properties, you will see that, that price going up, denoting a growth in the value of your investment or what we call capital gain. Right. We've talked about real estate as, as, as a credible way of making your retirement investment. And why Hi, is that? Man. Hi. Before you present this slide, um, yeah. maybe answer a few questions about REITs, uh, right. you know, because it seems the a few people are interested. Um, okay. Fiona is asking, um, you know, those reads that you've, those quetus that you've mentioned, what right. percentage of occupancy, what was the percentage of your occupancy in the last month? Right. So the average occupancy of all the four properties is 94%. Uh, the regulator requires at least 80% when you're putting, uh, uh, you know, properties in a read. 
the break even of a property in a rate is usually between 40 and 50%. So um, we have experienced a huge demand in, in our properties and primarily because of the asset class we got into purpose built student accommodation, meaning that we are utilizing space better compared to a residential or a commercial property. So the average uh, uh, occupancy is 94%. Perfect. Um, Abu Maggio is asking, is there any calculator for the REITs to enable one to know how much uh, how much invested we will yield and what returns? Do you have such a calculator? Sure. Um, we have a calculator which uh, we will share with the wealth type and probably you can get it on your email so you're able to play around even as you plan for your retirement. You're able to see how much you need to invest over what period of time and how much will come out at the other end in terms of uh, you know capital gain and the earnings you'd have gotten in terms of dividends over that period of time. Perfect, so I'll share, yes, I'll share, yes, I do have a copy of that calculator and I'll share with everyone um, mm -hmm. via email because I have your emails. Um, and then Rita is asking, what's the dividend payout ratio for the ACON I write? Right, so the, the total return for the income rate is 11.1%, okay? And like I said, um, REITs are medium term to long term investments. So that is averaged over 10, period, a 10 year period of time. So this is 11.1% rate of return per annum. Uh, uh, of that, 7.1% is, is, is a, a dividend payout and 4% is capital gain year on year. Okay, so that also answers um, Arab Mulilo's question. Um, right. How much, and also Fiona's question of how much percentage of dividend for rates, you've answered right. that. Um, then there's this question Joyce asked, do rates only pay dividends or pay rent monthly as well? So it's, you're not receiving rent, but uh, Donald can right. explain how that works. So um, what happens is that the properties in the, in the REIT um, receive rent okay, mm -hmm. every month because we all pay rent monthly. That yeah. rent is, is put in a pot and then twice a year that rent is distributed to investors. Perfect. Um, so Mwehaki is asking, so rates can be owned by companies too? Yeah, so companies can also invest in a REIT, right? Correct, yes. Companies, um, a lot of companies have invested in the econ REITs, especially on the development side. And yes, companies can, can invest in REITs as well as individuals can invest in REITs. Okay, final question before I allow you to continue. What is the difference between capital gain and dividends? Thank you very much. Um, dividends is, is a share of the returns or um, rent that comes into the REIT, okay? Uh, if you look at dividends in terms of shares of stocks, it means that it's a share of the profit which the company has made and that, uh, share, uh, that profit would come from the activities that the company carries out. In our case, uh, we are in the rental uh, housing business, meaning that uh, our income comes from rent, and therefore our profit comes from rent. So that is what is put in a pot and distributed as dividends. A, a capital gain, on the other hand, is the rise in the property that you're holding in the REIT, meaning that the valuation um, uh, grows over time, and that is for various reasons. Um, and, that, and, that, and that valuation me means that the value at which you bought one unit or one share uh, rises over time. Why is that important? If you got into a REIT now and the unit price was 20 shillings, um, when you're exiting in say five, 10 years, you, you would wish that that price is probably 50, 60 shillings so that you, you have a benefit in terms of the, the 40 shillings on top, if it's 60 shillings, you have a benefit. Why? Because there's inflation of that period of time. So your investment should pay you, but also protect you from uh, inflation. So capital gain means a growth in value of your investment. Perfect. Last question. Last, last, before you continue, where are VUCA offices located <laughs> if one would like to pay a visit? You know, Thank office. you very much. Uh, we are located at Econ House, there. where I'm taking this webinar uh, from. Is Econ House uh, is off James Kishuru. Um, for those people who pass by here, you'll see a huge prominent board uh, by Ipsos, which is also a company which is based out of this building. So it's just a few minutes from the Lovington Mall in, in the Lovington area on James Kishuru. Okay, so a burning question. I keep saying it's the last one, but Kiplangat Kiru would like to ask, how do I start investing in REITs step-by-step -step process? Right. How do I start as we start? Thank, thank you very much, uh, Kiplangat. Um, we have a very simplified uh, process uh, to invest in REITs, and that is through the Buka uh, Investment Club. Um, you know, the Wealth Tribe, Agatha has shared a link that enables you to onboard yourself in, in less than three minutes. Uh, by just sharing your ID, your telephone number, your full names as per ID, 
and your email address. And once you click, uh, once you click on submit, uh, you're able to pay for your membership. You know, just 998 shillings. And just like that, you, you're a member of VUCA and you own 10, 10 units of uh, income REITs. And from there, you are able to start investing in the REITs. So the, the process is fairly simple, fairly quick for those people who will be interested in onboarding. There's a link on the chat section of, 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 of this webinar. So you can click on it and, 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 and give us feedback on what your experience has been in terms of onboarding. Okay, perfect. Um, so Mwehaki is saying uh, she can't believe that she didn't know anything about REITs before right. today. So she's so glad that she attended this. So Karibu Sana Mwehaki, and you can use the link I've shared in the comment section to start investing in the Econ I right. So go on, um, Donald. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much for those questions. I'm happy to take a few more as, as we conclude. Um, uh, uh, the, question, uh, the, the point I was making is that every investor seeks a real estate that is profit making. We all inherently want to own you know, big properties. We want to make money from real estate, but we know that it takes time to, it takes money and time to first of all, buy land. You have to buy wholesome. You cannot buy inches. You cannot buy fractions of land. You have to buy a whole plot where you're going to build. Secondly, you need money to build that property. And it also takes time for you to then uh, get people to rent your property once you build and to generate profit profit that takes a bit of time so many people would want but they're not able to but now the kenya regulatory environment uh, allows this through the REIT framework uh, meaning that you, you you can also become a landlord by investing in REITs. you literally buy a piece of kwetu and then uh, start receiving rent and also earning capital gain as you go along so this 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 uh, framework was put in place by the capital markets authority in 2013 uh, REITs were launched in the US as early as 1960, and that has helped them grow their real estate, but also benefited them, you know, individuals in, in, in the US, just as we are going to benefit here in Kenya. But there's a primary reason for that, because we inherently love plots, and the statistics on the left will show you that there's just about one trillion tied in capital in land in Nairobi, that is capital seating, and a total of 12 trillion tied in land. In, in properties in Nairobi, Kajiado, Machakos, Kiambu, so Joska Kamulu, uh, at the river, Siokimau, uh, uh, Ruiru, all those places, there's 12 trillion shillings uh, tied in capital there. And this is capital which is not generating income for the investors who have bought this land. The only place is that the, the plot of land is going to increase in value over time. But it, that is rarely the case. So people end up buying these properties, hoping the road will pass by there and, and, and the, the, the prices are going to double, triple. And then people end up getting into a lot of pro problems because of that. So if you look at 12 trillion shillings, this is the equivalent of 24 expressways. If you use 55 billion shillings uh, as, as the amount that was used to build the expressway. 24 uh, expressways will mean a, a, an expressway in each county. So there's a huge potential in terms of um, uh, Kenyans investing and Kenyans love to invest in real estate, but they do not have credible options. There's also people who have invested in, 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 in schemes which are not regulated and gotten into a lot of trouble because when something is not regulated by the government, your interests as an investor are not protected. You can get into something because you want to get into a high risk investment which gives you a high return, but chances are the outcomes will not be very good for the bulk majority. So it's always good when you're thinking about real estate, think about how is this regulated? How is my investment covered? How, how am I protected? Especially because I'm putting this money away for my, for my retirement. So let's let's look at the the bigger story and and why uh, and how we got here. So over years we achieved market leadership in the student accommodation sector through uh, to student residences. So by 2030 we expect to add uh, our capacity to at least 40,000 beds. We are currently at just about 4,700 beds. What opportunity did we see? So in 2017 there was just about 400,000 students coming to Nairobi for education, and you can look at these statistics from how many students are doing KCSC. So the bulk of them come to Nairobi for tertiary and university education. There's only 40,000 beds, meaning that there's a huge gap. There's more than 90% gap in, in accommodation facilities in Nairobi. The result is a lot of people are staying in makeshift uh, accommodation, you know, in Nairobi West, fringes of time, Rongai, uh, Gidurai, TRM area, you know, places which are not conducive. So when in, 20, in 2017, we spotted this gap and, and built our, opened our first purpose-built student accommodation, which is the Kwetu Jogo Road. In the last five years, we managed, in the last five years uh, uh, since 2017, we managed to build five of them. So over that period of time and pushing occupancy above 90%, explaining the fact that uh, there's a huge opportunity and, and, and the demand for these properties. In 2021, in order to continue with that growth, we went to the capital markets 
and they issued two reads, the first uh, pure reads, uh, development reads in Africa. And those, those reads are trading uh, in the Nairobi Securities Exchange, uh, USP. And, and that is the over counter solution for trading, uh, you know, um, solutions or investments, uh, you know, issued by unquoted companies. So as at uh, 2030, we are planning to have at least 40,000 bets. And this is the reason why we went to the capital markets to ensure that we are sharing this in this prosperity with in, you know, individual citizens, but also giving uh, Kenyans an opportunity to invest in credible regulated uh, investments. So what is VUCA? Because a lot of people keep asking me that. So VUCA is a regulated investment club that enables individual investors to own units of uh, profitable Kwetu student residences affordably and conveniently. It's a platform like you will see once you onboard yourself, you're able to make your investments regularly, quickly. And also if you're looking to trade or sell your investments, you're able to do the same because this, these are uh, investments which are trading in the Nairobi Securities Exchange. So in other words, VUCA ni chama ya real estate, a regulated chama ya real estate. So um, there's various benefits, like I mentioned, the fact that it's regulated, so meaning that your money is safe. And every time you invest in anything, think about how that is regulated, how that, uh, that, that product is regulated. And that's why today I limited myself to regulated uh, products. Um, you, the tenor, this allows you to save for medium term to long term, very suitable when you're doing uh, retirement planning. Um, quality of assets, these are actual buildings which you can see and touch, a lot of you know, uh, the Kwetu Student Residences brand. We now have properties across Nairobi. It's forming part of the urban folk. It gets you committed to your investment and retirement journey. And there's flexibility. Flexibility in two ways. One, you can invest as little as 200 shillings. Okay, You can invest as, as much as 5 million shillings, depending on what you're looking to make your retirement plan. So there's flexibility. You can invest monthly, daily. Once a year, you can do one-off. So there's a lot of flexibility. Secondly, there's flexibility in terms of uh, liquidity how quickly you can get out of the scheme so if you're looking to if you had a plot of land valued at 1 million shillings and you needed 500,000 you have two options you can split the plot of land if it's too small it's not possible for you to split you have to sell the whole plot of land get the money spend the 500,000 shillings then look to invest 500,000 shillings but for REITs you'll only sell what you need if you're looking to to get you know a million shillings out of your investment because you're retired you only sell that portion meaning that the rest of it is you know, generating, you know, in, is generating income and getting capital gain for you. It's also tech enabled, meaning that you do not have to come or visit, fill a PDF form or send forms and all that stuff. It's fully tech enabled, meaning that you'll onboard yourself on your phone or your laptop. Uh, you will share your identification documentation, you know, through the same platform. And you're able to initiate your buy or sell orders through that same platform. So how do they compare with uh, money markets? So both are regulated, they involve pooling of funds, there's visible existing assets, there's income generating assets, both are managed by a fund manager. Both are structured, meaning that they trustee, custodian, and fund or read manager for compliance. The reason for that is to protect the investor interest. However, and, and both are transparent. However, the differences is that income reads invest in real estate assets, which are, which are, which are, which are income generating. And income REITs generate uh, and distribute at least 80% of the income to clients. Income REITs, uh, in the, the unit price grows due to capital gain. I explained that. Um, REITs are listed or traded in the Nairobi Securities Exchange, USP. And REITs are medium-term to long-term investments. The importance of that is that you need that discipline if you are looking to invest in, you know, for retirement purposes. Like I said, you cannot invest in short-term instruments if you're looking to achieve long-term goals, because then you'll not be able to have the discipline. So how do they compare with the other investments? So if you, if you rate it on affordability, convenience, tax, incentives, uh, stable income and quality of assets, um, for, for VUCA, it's affordable because you can buy as little as 200 shillings in terms of investment. Um, you come in for only 998 shillings. It's convenient because you do it from your phone. There's tax incentives. REITs are tax compliant, uh, tax, tax effective. They only charge 5% withholding tax on the dividend payout. There's no taxes on the capital gain. Um, the stable income, I said in retirement, you need that stable income. You need your investment to be paying you, you know, money, which adds up to your monthly income. There's quality of assets because these are real assets. It's quite to student residences. You can see them, touch them, and we'll continue building and deploying more. If you look at rental un units, they give you stable income. If you, can, if you can get the tenants on board, there's quality of assets because these are your properties. But it takes a lot of money to buy and build and deploy and, and own these properties. If it's plots of land, your only play will be quality of assets and capital gain or the, the, the growth in the value of those assets over 
period of time. So they will not give you any consistent income. There's no tax incentives. It's not con convenient. You know, going to visit your plot of land over time uh, to, 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 to see if it exists or if there are any issues. Um, there's other investments. I talked about shares, stocks. They're also good investments. that are affordable, convenient. There's tax incent incentives. However, shares do not have to pay dividends by law. So some days you will not get dividends depending on the company performance. Or if you're looking to expand, to expand into other territories, there'll, there'll be no income. If you look at the insurance investment products, they're affordable, convenient, there's, there's tax incentives. They don't give you a stable income. You have to wait until maturity, uh, but there's also quality of assets. If you look at what we popularly know as uh, money market funds, they're affordable, they're convenient, there's no tax incentives. You pay 15% on whatever return you get, uh, so you, the interest you're getting. However, you get stable return because every month you'll be given you know, some interest uh, off your investment, and there's also quality of assets because these are regulated, uh, you know, regulated investments. So um, I'd like to go directly to you know, how you can start investing, look, looking at the time. I'll, I'll share the presentation with the team so that you're able to get it. So, um, we say VUCA na Kwetu because VUCA allows you to own a piece of Kwetu and Kwetu is the Kwetu student residences. So for only 998 shillings, you can come, you can start your investment journey with, in REITs and you get uh, 10 you know, units of REITs, you earn dividends every six months and you become a VUCA member, meaning that you can continue accumulating or buying more REITs. So for only 998 shillings, you can join a regulated real estate investment club, which is VUCA and which gives you the benefits I've mentioned. How do you join? Um, Agatha has shared a link on, on, on the chat section, which you can click on and start uh, onboarding yourself in five easy steps. So um, which investment categories are there? If you look at it in totality, once you start your journey for 998, you can move all the way up to 2 million shillings. Um, and these this investment categories allow you to invest depending on your strength, your capacity, and, and how long you're looking to invest. Um, uh, the you know reads uh, charges a joining fee and and an annual fee because it's it's a it's, it's a club it's an investment club and also because uh, the reads uh, are, are trading in the Nairobi Securities Exchange there's a service charge and the service charge is accumulation of trading charges of the designated broker the administrator and Nairobi Securities Exchange platform charges so that 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 is uh, the much uh, probably I can share about the investment but before I get out of there. Only you will determine when and how you will retire. We have established that retirement is not an age, but the amount of wealth you will have by the time you want to retire. And only you will, de will determine whether you will be stressed by bills, you will be unhealthy, or become you know, a dependent of someone else. Okay? And we, we know a lot of these examples in families. We know how many times you have to raise funds because somebody has to go to a hospital. Is it ideal? Is it what we want for ourselves? That is really up to us to determine. Or will you live a happy, healthy, fulfilling retirement life? You know, where you enjoy, do the things you love, you know, engage with your children without them thinking, oh, mom is calling, she needs more money and I'm in a lot of problems, okay? So I'll leave you that for tonight. Unless we have questions, I would like to, you know, stop at that point and take questions. Perfect. Thank you, Donald, for the awesome presentation. Now, um, people have maybe you can even remove the slide so that people yes. can interact with you now. Um, people have questions and the right. most burning questions is people have clicked the link to join VUCA, right. but then they've right. realized that they have to pay uh, right. 998 shillings. Uh, please explain that more as much as you've already talked about it. People want to know why are they paying 998 shillings? Right, so um, uh, to join VUCA Investment Club, uh, this offer gives you 10 units, uh, a share is marked at 20.88 shillings. So if you do the math, that comes to around 215 shillings uh, if you factor in the transaction cost. So the first 215 shillings gives you, gives you 10 shares to start you off. And then the rest of the amount covers partly your joining fee and your annual fee. I mentioned that uh, for silver package, which is the entry level package, there's a joining and annual fee, which totals, for, which totals 998 shillings, meaning that when you start, it covers you, when you start at 998 shillings, you get 10 units and you're covered for six months before you can, you know, you can, you can renew your subscription for the full year. So 998 gives you a lot of value. It gives you 10 shares, it gives you membership. So you're permanently a member of VUCA you, you, because 499 goes to the joining fee. Then it, 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 it caters for your annual fees for six months. 
Okay, perfect. So that is clear. Right. Um, so, and remember that VUCA is a regulated product. VUCA it's and regulated by Capital and... Markets Authority. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. it's not a patapotea business. It is. It is not. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, some Catherine is asking, what happens when you want to opt out? Yes. So, um, it, it's as simple as selling your shares. So when, when you, uh, for those people who have joined or those, those who will join, when you go to your platform, you're able to sell your units. So assuming that I've accumulated investments worth 3 million shillings and I'm near retirement, I want to opt out. I just click sell, or even if it's next week, there's no time limit. You do not have, there's no holding period. There's no penalties. You just sell your units. Once you click sell on the back end, that order is received and executed at Nairobi Securities Exchange and the value applied to your wallet. So um, uh, on your wallet, you're able to withdraw your funds either to your Mpesa or to your bank account. Okay. Um, Bruno seems to have a problem. How long does the KYC verification take? Because he says he joined um, on 7th of October and to date his verification has not been done. Apologies for that. Take? Apologies for that. Uh, Beth. There was there was a challenge. There's a technical challenge in the last one week, which has since been sorted. So ideally, onboarding process should begin within 48 hours. And what the onboarding team does on the back end is, you know, writes to you, uh, confirms that you you indeed paid the 998 shillings and you're a member of Booker, and then reaches out to you to get uh, your identification document. This is your national identification document or your passport, or your alien card if you're, you're, you're not a Kenyan national. So once that is validated, confirmed against uh, you know, what is on IPRS, then you're able to uh, get your full Booker membership and you're able to start investing. So okay. that, that process should ideally take not more than a few days, so two to three days. Okay. Uh, so some Gashari is asking, is 998 the subscription and joining as well as start of buying units? I believe Donald has answered that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody else, what is the value? I don't know exactly what she means by this, but maybe you, you will understand. What is the value of the 10 Kwetu shares? Right. So the, the value, the valuation is, uh, like I said, is 215 shillings for those 20, 10 Kwetu shares. And the reason is how you invest in REITs is by buying shares. So unlike, unlike a typical money market fund where you put your money in the account and then the investment manager or the fund manager makes investment decision on the back end. For VUCA, they, there's no other decision being made. You're literally buying REITs. So uh, uh, an example is if I'm looking to, in, to invest 20,800, it means that I'm buying 1,000 shares or 1,000 units because each is marked at 20.88 uh, shillings. OK. Um, could you kindly repeat the tax implication of the Acorn I right? Right, and this is not just for Econ IRIT, it's, it's basically for all REIT because this is by law. Um, when you get a quoted return, and we have to always, uh, as people who are looking to invest, we have to become savvy at this. If, 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 if uh, my savings account quotes 10% and you'll not get that from a bank, it will be probably between 2, two and 2 and 5%. If I give you 10%, just know that there's a tax called withholding tax, okay? The government charges certain taxes on that return. So whatever interest you will get, assuming that I'm investing 100,000, I should get 10,000 shillings in terms of actual money to my account. However, 15% of that 10,000, which is 1,500 shillings will go to taxes. Meaning that I will invest 100,000, but I will only get 8,500, okay? So tax has eaten 1,500 shillings, okay? So that's, that is a, a similar case in, um, in, in uh, money market funds. So the quoted rate, you have to less 15% tax. Now, when you think about REITs, REITs have two components in terms of their return. It has the capital gain, which is usually a quoted number, and also the dividend payout, which is the immediate value that you get when uh, every, every so often in terms of dividend payout. So the capital gain, in our case, is 4%, has 0% taxes. So there's no, there's no taxes. If you are to exit and sell your units, you will get that as a full value. Okay. The second bit is the dividend value, which is the 7.1%. There's only 5% withholding tax. Compare that with 15% charged on your savings account or money market fund. Meaning that if you, if you work out, if you work out um, that, that math, um, you got a quote of uh, you know, 10%, the effective rate for your savings account or money market fund will be 8.5%. But, but for REITs, if you get the same 10%, the effective uh, rate will be just about 9.5%. So it's much higher in terms of effectiveness. The 1% you look at, 
over a period of time, since you're investing for retirement purposes, uh, you know, it turns out to be, you know, a lot of money if you look at the power of compounding, okay? So that's, okay. that's, that's how you compare, in, you know, uh, tax implications when you're making investments. Um, if you invested the same amount of money in a business, you have to think about 30% income tax, you have to think about VAT, you have to think about excise duty, or if, if, you're in, you know, if you're selling drinks and things like that. So these are things we need to think about when you're doing returns so that you're able to compare investment. Okay. Well, Lisa is saying, how do I retrieve my account? I already signed up and posed at the membership fee a week ago. Can he or she continue with the registration? Yes, yes. It's possible to, to continue with that registration. So even if you were not able to complete, I, I believe there was a message that you received um, advising you, your, account, your temporary account number and the pay bill and how to pay and, how, and, and so on and so forth. So once you make that payment, then the clock starts ticking. Within 48 hours, you'll receive a call and an automated email for you to complete registration on the back end, then you're able to start investing. Okay. Rita is asking if dividends are at 7% as at now, does this mean that with time that will grow? Yes, like in 10 years with that, do you project that that will have grown? Yes, the, it will grow because of um, additional properties we are putting in place. However, as a regulated investment, um, the law does not allow us to give guaranteed returns. We put based on the projection and also what, what has come out of the investment in the last one year. So we expect the dividends to grow as we keep adding properties. And that's why we normally say the best time to come into the REITs is when there's few properties. Why? Last year, the property valuation of the three properties which was there was just about 3.5 billion. Now, with the addition of, of, of parklands, the valuation of those properties is 4.7 billion. There's much more rent coming into the REITs. So, uh, you know, there will be much more in terms of sharing uh, to share with investors as we go along. Okay. Uh, Brandon, your question, how can I get the recording? I will upload the recording of this webinar on the Wealth Tribe's YouTube channel, the YouTube channel called The Wealth Tribe. And then Arab says, I started the registration process around midnight, did the KYC submission same time. And by 8 a.m. in the morning, my account was ready for investment. This was on the 11th of October after uh, requesting and getting an invitation from Agatha. I think the process is much efficient. Thank you, Arab, for that feedback. I'm happy that you've already started investing. Uh, well, Lisa, allow me to link you up with the relationship manager. In fact, he's on this call. His name is Maher. He will give you a call and he'll make sure you are sorted. Um, Abumagi is asking, can I upgrade my membership? Um, Donald, can he upgrade his membership from, you know, silver to gold and others? Absolutely. When you go into your account, uh, just below your membership, you'll see an upgrade button. So you are able to upgrade to whatever category, depending on how much money you're looking to invest, depending on how far or close your retirement uh, is. So you're able to start, uh, you know, investing either more um, and you're able to, to, to upgrade as you go along. Okay. Um, and then Chalo Victoria is asking, <laughs> the value of the 10 shares is approximately 210 shillings. So where is the difference of the 998 cost going to clear okay. this up? Okay, so, so thank you. Thank you very for much. Thank you very much for that question. It's a very good question. When I, I made the presentation, I said the fact that the, this um, you know, investment, the securities are trading at Nairobi Securities Exchange, there is, there is a 3% cost in card when, when, we, when you buy or sell these investments in the, in the platform, in the USP platform. So in this example, 10 units, each one of them is costing 20.88 shillings. So this is roughly 209 shillings. So if you do 3% of uh, 209 shillings, 3% of 209 shillings, it comes to approximately six shillings. So when you add six, six shillings to this, you get 215 shillings in terms of the actual outlay, which is incurred to make the investment. Okay, perfect. Uh, I've finished the questions in the chat box. Now I go to the ones in the Q&A, just in case those people thought I forgot them. Uh, yeah. Please expound more on the 3%. Is it 3% of my total investment each year? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, so unlike money market funds that charge man uh, management fee, uh, for REITs, you only incur the cost, just like normal shares. You only incur that cost when you're, when you're buying new shares at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. So assuming that um, I have invested, you know, say 100,000 shillings already, and I want to buy more shares for, say, 1,000 shillings, okay? So when I go to the platform, there will be a cost of 30 shillings uh, for buying these three new shares. And then assuming I don't do anything with these shares, uh, I put aside my investment, I'm getting my dividends, I'm getting my, my you know, capital gain for whatever period of time, there will be no 
further cost to those shares. There will be no further cost. So you only incur the cost when you're buying or selling. So during trading at Nairobi Securities Exchange. Okay, perfect. In uh, I, Win is saying I invested at the beginning of the month, but the status is still read spending. How long does it take to be allocated units? Thank you very much, Winnie Rotich. Um, so uh, trading on the USP happens uh, one uh, day a month, so on the 30th of each month. So all the orders made you know, in the month between 1st and, and 30th of this month will all be fulfilled on 30th uh, of, of the month. And once that trading happens at an Aerobis Security Exchange, then those, those units reflect on your platform. So okay. it, it will, yes, it will remain pending until the order is fulfilled at the Securities Exchange. Okay, at the end of the month, uh, at the beginning of ne next month, you should be able to see a difference. Correct. Uh, on the 30th of each month or 31st, that's when trading happens. So on the first of each month, those shares reflect. Okay. Um, do those shares or units appreciate in value? I believe you answered that. Yes, yes. Okay. Do you get a share certificate for the REITs? <laughs> So now we we um, we uh, with a new process we've also rolled out um, you know uh, a certificate of confirmation of membership uh, once you onboard onto the platform, and this is following feedback from a lot of investors. They said yes, yeah, I can see this thing on my platform, but because we are Kenyans and we are used to paper, I'd like a paper to show that I actually am an investor uh, with Booker. So yes, uh, we are now issuing certificates for all the new members who have joined, and including the old ones. We're going to be dispatching. You know, a letter to each one of you, uh, tell, you know, confirming that you're a member of Puka or you are, are an investor with Puka. Oh, wow, that's new information to me, also. So, yes. I'm happy with the new development. I didn't yes. know that. We are, okay. getting a lot of, hmm? we are getting a lot of feedback from investors and, and in engagement with the regulator, trying to make it as easy and as seamless and as safe for investors to continue investing. Okay, perfect. How long does the money take to hit my account once I make the withdrawal, or once I yeah, once I make the withdrawal? So uh, uh, on 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 paper, we normally say within uh, seven days, but between three to five days, you have uh, the money in, in your Mpesa or bank account uh, once you initiate a withdrawal. Okay. Do you think you will be able to onboard commercial properties in the future? Right. This is usually subject to investment thesis and. Um, like I said, uh, if you there's a reason why we got into student accommodation. One is the demand. If you look at what happened to commercial properties post COVID, is you know, right now I'm I'm taking this uh, webinar from the office, but the bulk of you are seated in your homes, meaning that you don't really need an office to work. So there's there's less demand, there's margin compression in in, in rental in, in commercial properties since you're negotiating with a corporate entity. Um, then there's another uh, asset class, the residential property. I gave the example that if you look at a typical two-bedroom house in Kileleshwa, that two-bedroom house is likely to give you 60,000 shillings rent. Okay, yeah. and That two-bedroom house has the living room, the two bedrooms, those are already three rooms, the kitchen, those are four rooms, and the master you know, washroom and the other washroom. Just call them five rooms. For us, that, that, those are five student rooms with, 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 with 10 students. And, and each student giving us 17,500. So the return on that is roughly 175,000 shillings versus the 60,000 shillings in, in residential property. So if you compare that with commercial, commercial will be much less than that. So the reason why we got into purpose-built student accommodation is because they're high yielding, we are able to get occupancy, right? So out of those five rooms, we have 10 people. If one person leaves, then we do not have challenges with occupancy. In the two bedroom story I gave you, one person leaves, that's an entire family gone. You have lost that income. So there's a strategic focus, strategic focus around why we invested in student accommodation and why it is good for especially REITs and the returns that we're paying to investors. Okay. I guess that right. also um, sort of answers the next question, which is mm -hmm. what is the level of risk? Is it on the same level? Would you say it's on the same level as crypto or is it right. on the same right. level as saving in a chama? Right. So now, um, uh, you know, REITs are considered to be medium uh, to low risk investment. And, and, that, and, and how best to look at that is look at a return. If you look at crypto, the bulk of them promise, you know, 30, 100 percent return. That tells you automatically this is a high risk investment. It's part of the You may make that money or lose it. There's also okay. people who have invested in, reg in unregulated uh, real estate investment. That time, the promise was 18 percent, I believe. And, and when that was way above market, that tells you this is a high risk investment. So uh, REITs are low to medium risk, and that is also reflected in the return because there's not so much risk. It's actual properties, 
the property title is given to a trustee, the trustees cooperative bank, who's also regulated by central bank and, and, and capital markets authority, ensuring that there's safety in the investment. Okay, good. Yeah. What happens if, <clears throat> and somebody is asking, what happens if inflation skyrockets past the 15% mark? Will the right. investment avenues, and now he's speaking in general, not just REITs, will the investment yeah. avenue adjust above this inflation cap in terms of the interest earned by customers? Thank you very much. So now um, I, I, I like explaining inflation and the beauty of investing in real estate when you talk about inflation. So inflation denotes a general increase in the prices of goods and services. And when that happens, rent increases with that, along with it, okay? Any, any market where you go and there's an increase in cost of food, prices, fuel, what happens? The cost of building materials also goes up. And as a result, also cost of rental property, cost of electricity and everything goes up with it. So when inflation increases, the cost of you know, living increases, the cost of rent increases, meaning that there's much more return payable to, to investors and ensuring that they're covered against inflation. So um, when investing in REITs is, is good because one is there will be capital gain, which will be inordinate, much higher than normal, but also the return would be reflective of the inflation status, if that was the case. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think these are repeat. Does the capital gain on REITs attract the 5% capital gains tax? No. No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It's not charged in capital gains um, tax. Okay. Are we... So I don't know, are we holding VAT tax? Okay, that is not a question. Between pension planning with insurance companies, now we are back to the general uh, investing in, in your retirement. Between pension planning with insurance companies and those offered by money market, what kind of companies are better in personal pension arrangements? So I, I would always advise diversification because um, different uh, pension arrangements have different risk implications. They also have different return profiles. So it's really planning, like I said, determining um, what risk am I willing to get into and what liquidity am I looking into? And therefore, what sort of, how many instruments, what sort of investments should I get into? So all of them are good as long as they're regulated. You only remember all of them have different rules. They have different yeah. return and risk profiles. Okay. Then Brian is asking, is investing in insurance products as investments for the future, like covering for your children's education wise, especially before you already have them? I'll answer this one. I already did a very um, valuable article on the blog. Mm. The blog is thewealthstripe.com. And this blog post compares um, education insurance pol policies versus money market funds. And there's even the math uh, breaking down of whether money market funds are better than uh, education insurance policies. But in a nutshell, no, education insurance policies is not a good way to plan for your children's education because if you compare it with other investments, uh, you'll get better uh, returns from it. But as I said, there's a very valuable article in the com with comparisons, benefits, advantages, and everything, and my perfect suggestions on how to uh, plan for your children's education. Um, moving on, um, please teach us about the power of compound interest and early investing. I believe uh, Donald has covered this, but maybe Donald, you can say something small about what is the difference between simple interest and compounding interest, and why is it important to always be in the side of compounding your wealth? Yeah, so um, I think that is that is also you know uh, an area we can uh, look at uh, providing a bit more you know content in the future. But uh, compounding interest means that uh, part of the rather the earnings you're getting from investments are invested and therefore forms part of the capital that you're putting for further investment. And the mm -hmm. power of that is once you start investing early and you do that over a long period of time you're deploying much more capital than somebody who took out, you know, uh, their interest or, you know, or, or where the only amount of money and is, is simple interest, where it's a one-off interest and it does not form, you know, that does not form the basis of uh, capital, you know, when you're calculating the next investment cycle. So the, the compounding interest is very powerful because over a long period of time, you're able to accumulate much more. You're able to, in terms of accumulate much more wealth, you're able to get much more return in the long term. But the trick is usually start small, but most importantly, start now. Okay, you're never too young to start investing, and you're never too old to uh, you know to start investing. Okay, um, Brian would like to know how do you handle the confusion that comes with many investment opportunities. You know, right now if you go online and and yeah, online there are yeah. so many investment opportunities available for you. How do you mm -hmm. solve that um, confusion? So um, the 
first, the first thing is, is uh, I'm a firm believer of um, the fact that you need to have goals, okay? And when you do goal planning, you normally have your short-term goals, okay? This includes things like you're buying a phone, you want to go to coast in December, you want to, you know, quickly buy a car within a few months. Short-term, that means those are short-term goals. Medium-term uh, goals would be like, I need to get an MBA in the next three years since I'm working and I work long hours. It will probably will take me three years. I already have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. I want to, to do a wedding in two, three years without, without taking loans or without disturbing people. That, yeah. that would be medium-term planning. Now, long-term plans will be, for instance, my, my retirement plan is for the next 10 years. That's a long-term goal. Wealth mm -hmm. accumulation, that does not happen in a day or two. A lot of people do not know that wealth accumulation is actually a goal. It's, it's something that you work towards and therefore has to be worked on consistently. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you look at all these goals, they're not equal. Okay, because some are short term. Okay, you will have such short term solutions, and you can fund them from your salary. But a lot of your long term uh, goals will not be funded by you know your salary in the future because it may not be there. It will be, they will be funded by the investments you put in place. So when you're determining what investments to put in, you you also match those with your goals. The other thing you look at, apart from your investment horizon or the length it takes to actualize your goals, is the risk upon which you're willing to take. When you're young. Or you have excess cash, uh, or you have, or, you know, you've gotten some cash out of some deal you've done. Uh, what we call, you know, uh, you know, where you've gotten some money out of, you know, some 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 bad in a Cebu sort of a thing. You can decide to invest that in high risk investments because it wasn't your money in the first place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when, when you're young, you can also decide. Twenty percent of my money will go to high risk investments because it might be high return or I might lose it. However, as I go along, since I'm, I'm working with 10 years to my retirement, I'm not really willing, willing to risk my, my investment because that is my retirement plan. So when making a decision, I have to look at one, how long my goals take to actualize, two, the rev level of risk I'm willing to take upon. When investing, you have to look at a balanced portfolio. Don't be too conservative, meaning that you put your money in a PID or in a bank account because then you'll not be able to benefit from the power of compounding. Yeah. Then don't be too aggressive in terms of taking upon risk, meaning that you're willing to risk all your life savings because you're looking for a high return. It has to be balanced. You, and one way of, of arriving at this uh, conclusion, I always advise, if, it's not, if it does not appear as naturally as it should to you, always seek mm -hmm. the services of, of a professional, like you know Agatha or the Wealth Tribe. Speak to a professional. It will always pay in the long run. Okay, yeah. we, we make a lot of decisions when we're looking for a house, you go speak to an agent, and this is a house you live in for two, three years and, and get out. But if you're looking to make investments, we want to get free advice or, you know, make decisions by ourselves. Speak to, uh, you know, a qualified uh, personal financial advisor. Sometimes they will give you insights that you did not have, including, you know, how, you know, what investments you've taken in. And I'll give you an example. I know people who are extremely asset rich because they have many plots of land, but they're extremely cash poor, and now they're retired. So they are struggling. Yeah. This is somebody who was asking me, Nataka news easy plot, sort of sasa me, I get into something, I eat all my money. But when they started putting money aside, they, they got to, into the habit of every time I get a bonus, I buy a plot. This is my retirement plan. Now they have all these plots. They do not have cash flow. They cannot construct because they're retired and they cannot quickly exit their position. So was it a bad investment decision? No, but it wasn't properly advised because then they did not put some money in plots, some other money into other things. Yeah, that's right. true. In fact, I can share that currently all 99% yeah. of my um, financial coaching clients are people who yeah. are above 40 who have Correct. all these plots of land. In fact, I have one who has a plot of land worth 19 million and Correct. she wants to, you know, she wants cash flow in her life, but yeah. no, she's been trying to sell this uh, 19 million plot of land for the last two and a half years. Uh, yeah. So she was telling me every time she starts the process, somebody shows interest, they start the process, but they yeah. never actually send the money. So she hasn't been able to sell this plot for two and a half years. So this person, yes, is asset rich. You know, they have all these plots of land, but they are cash poor. And the most important thing, I, even even before retirement, cash flow is very important. We say, we are very, very cash important. Flow. Yes. Cash flow is king. So the same mm -hmm. way when you have a toothache, the same way when you have a stomachache, you'll see a doctor. It's the same way when it comes to your finances, seek financial yeah. advice. Seek because financial otherwise, advice. Yeah, yeah, seek financial advice the same way you go to a doctor because otherwise you will work so hard. You'll sweat at work. You'll, you'll save your money. You'll invest your money. And then at the end of it all, you realize you wanted to go to Mombasa and you used the, the long route just because you did not yes. seek financial advice. And some of these advice is even free. I even offer free consultation. So take advantage right. of it. 
Um, so, be, so because we've been here for a while, we are going to wind up this webinar in the next 10 minutes. And of course, before I wind up, I'm going to make sure that Donald answers all the other questions because we still have 68 people logged in in this webinar. So clearly people are getting a lot of value. So two important things that you should take away from this webinar that investing in risk gives you a lot of cash flow when it comes to planning for retirement. I've shared a link in the chat box that you can immediately click and start your onboarding process. And the VUCA team will make sure you're onboarded uh, um, within a few hours, maybe even tomorrow. Two, I will share the recording of this webinar on the uh, Wealth Tribe YouTube channel. I'll share a link to that. And now we can continue with the last final question. I think there are about five and then we'll be done. If you have any other questions, um, please shoot them. Um, one well, last person is asking, I'd like to know the risks involved in investing in REITs. Maybe, I don't know if you've mentioned what are the risks involved. Thank you, thank you very much for that question. question. So. Thank you very much for uh, for that question. So I explained that there the, are the primarily two different types of REITs, the development REITs and the income REITs. The REITs we're discussing today are uh, called income REITs, meaning that they pull money from many investors like yourself and mine and then uh, and myself, and then invest this money in, in income generating assets. In our case, this is quite a student residency. So by that fact, because these are rental properties, you always face a certain risk that the risk that one, uh, there will not be enough occupancy. One, because mm -hmm. of a strategy you have employed, or two, because mm -hmm. of the asset classes you've gotten into. Those people who are in the know, or they know about REITs, they, because you know our REITs are not the only REITs in the market, you know uh, what the other REITs are you know, uh, you know, invested in and what the return profile has been you know, in those REITs. Primarily, is occupancy is driven by what you invest in. I mentioned why we invested in a purpose built student accommodation. One, because there's effective demand of, in terms of the people who are willing to pay for quality purpose-built student accommodation, an environment that allows students to learn and complete their studies well. And two, the population growth of this country, uh, it grows by at least 5% every year. It was 400,000 kids turning 18 in 2017. In 2030, there will be 1.2 million kids turning 2018, meaning that, meaning that there will be a stretch on the existing you know, facilities even by then. Now, when you're doing a business, you want that kind of a structure. You want you want a business where there's going to be growth in demand over time, okay? Even if many other players get into it, then you know that there's going to be returns. Um, so the other way of looking at occupancy is because we've addressed the strategy side of it, that student accommodation, there's, there's going to be demand in the short, medium term and long term. Two, how, how you build a brand, if you look at the Quetu student residence brand, it's become a household brand in Kenya, it's become part of the urban folk. We have uh, Kwetu alumni now, people who are very proud to have lived in, in Kwetu. So they have communities of people who stayed in Kwetu, Jogorod, or stayed in Kwetu, Strathmore, and so on and so forth. So it's a very strong brand. And then finally, uh, when you talk about occupancy, do you have a property manager who professionally does this, who knows what they're doing, who is advertis advertising, attracting the right kind of people who need to, um, who need to uh, stay in your properties? Then again, around occupancy is, to what extent do you have power? Okay, when you talk about margin compressions, about about how much are you able to negotiate? Uh, for instance, today about the cost of airtime in Safaricom, it's not possible. However, for corporates who are getting internet from them, are able to negotiate with Safaricom in terms of how much they pay for internet. So um, that is very very important. So occupancy is the single most biggest risk in in um, uh, in uh, rental properties and also income rates. The other one is, is a state of economy, if there's political tension, if um, there's acts, you know, you know, major acts in the economy, you know, like what, what happened during COVID, that, is, that would likely disrupt uh, business, but that cuts across all businesses, not just uh, REITs. Okay. As a young person under 30 starting a family, is it advisable to start investing in REITs or rather investing in risky platforms so as to grow capital? So I'd, I'd say balance your investment. There's, mm. there's, no, there's no strategy, uh, and I'm yet to meet any good financial advisor who tells you to invest in one thing, okay? <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, so you have to balance out. If you want to touch some risky assets, I mean, do that within a reasonable bound. But just know that there's a potential that you will lose that money, but also there's, there's a potential that you might make money. But I know people who got into things because they look like they will get they'll make quick money. It looks like a get-rich-quick scheme, but they end up losing that whole capital. Then you have to start working for new capital. So invest in, you know, in a balanced manner, okay? Think about when you start early in investing in things like the bonds. There was, there was one popular one, infrastructure bond. 
that will discipline you. It will give you appetite to invest in bonds in the future. Take a bit of a position in that. Start REITs, because you can start for as little as a thousand shillings. Learn how to invest in REITs, understand how they work, because investments without education is, is also a big risk, okay? Then, then uh, with time, then you, you'll be able to also invest in rental properties and all that stuff, but you have to invest in a balanced portfolio, if you ask me. Okay. Um, when they're asking for one to gain proper profits, you know, what's the least amount you'd recommend one to invest? And this is a good question because I keep getting a lot of people, um, when I tell them that you can start investing in REITs with as little as a thousand, Bob, then mm -hmm. I get follow-up questions with people asking me, after I invest a thousand shillings, how much money should I expect in my account? And my response is always, remember that you cannot gain financial freedom from any investment, may it be bonds, may it be shares, may it be money yeah. market, may it be REITs. You can never gain financial uh, freedom or financial independence or independence of any kind by just investing a thousand shillings so for right. one to get proper profits donald how much should we put in into this rate in order for us to you know get a good chunk of from dividends right so how i like to answer that question is from a goal point of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, regarding what does proper proper profit mean to me okay yeah and and what 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 is what income do i want to myself so let me give yeah. you an example Assuming mm -hmm. that I wanted uh, an income of, um, you know, 100,000 shillings from my investments, generally, yeah. in a year, it means that if my portfolio, whatever investments are put in place, uh, give me 10% averagely, and I work backwards, it means that I should have invested 1 million shillings in whatever investments I have collected. Then you work mm -hmm. backwards, the return is 100,000. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times the disconnect is where I think I'll invest 1,000 or 2,000 more then triple or double it, and then somehow end up at uh, you know, 100,000 shillings, which is not usually the case. So a good place to start is from the goal. What do you want to earn you know, by the time you retire, or what do you want to get as a return from your investments, whether annually, monthly? Do that math. Once you've calculated, then work backwards, and then you will find out how much you need to invest how, or how much you need to accumulate. So let me just give you an example. Mm -hmm. If I started investing um, uh, you know, 180 shillings today, Okay, which comes to just about 5,400 every month. And I, and I do this investment you know, consistently in the REITs for, for nine years. It means that I, I will touch 1 million shillings mm -hmm. in investment in REIT. I've only been putting 5,400 shillings religiously every month for nine years. I will have, nine, I'll have 1 million shillings in nine years. Mm -hmm. Now, beyond nine years, it means that I have 1 million shillings, which can now work for me, and I'll get 100,000 shillings if I work with that same return of you know 11 percent i'll get just about hundred and ten thousand shillings now in terms of payout from this one million shillings year on year after that investment has been arrived at so that's how i like looking at it okay perfect right. um arab is mad at you because he's asking why is it that you don't advertise these irit schemes because there is little <laughs> awareness and I regret coming across this platform this late. Just regret. <laughs> why are you not advertising? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have been, uh, you know, working with various, uh, you know, partners and looking to speak uh, to various platforms, including the Wealth Tribe and many others. Yeah. And 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 the reason is this is a regulated um, investment. There's 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 controls around um, how and when you can advertise and what you can okay. clearly say during advertisement. So we are very cognizant of that. Um, for unregulated investment in real estate, you see how often they advertise for plots on TV and stuff like that. How many, yeah. billboards, how many billboards a lot of off-plan uh, companies put up. But we have to, you know, we have to sell responsibly. It starts with educating. So there's no investment without educating, without knowing what is it involved, what am I investing in, what are the charges involved, what are the risks involved, like we've had a conversation. So for me, that, that's what I'd call investment. It's education, okay, in investment yes. Right. Yeah, so that, that's very important because I, I know if you've been on the Well Tribe, if you've been a member of the Well Tribe long enough, you know, my rule, I always have one rule is that don't invest in anything you don't understand. Like even in this platform, if Donald has not told you all the information you need to know in order for you mm -hmm. to invest, ask the questions. Seek don't more information, invest. yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, ask me, ask Donald on, on my YouTube channel, The Wealth Tribe. Uh, there's a whole playlist. I think now we are at six videos covering what REITs are. So if you feel that this webinar did not even give you enough information, pause the investment, go to those videos, watch them, and then invest. So always invest in what you fully understand. Um, and Dominic is asking, can them? 
shares or the units in that street also depreciate in value? So um, it's can the units and the REITs depreciate in value? It's not possible because it's a real estate investment. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as long as you keep adding more properties and the properties are value, they'll keep continue at, you know earning, uh, you know increasing in value. The beauty of real estate investments, unlike many other investments, it's not just a business uh, based on concepts. It's actual buildings sitting in an actual piece of land somewhere. So that will always increase in properties, in, in, in prices, in value. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, how I was asking, what are some of these well-balanced portfolios to invest in? I believe, um, and how do you know? I believe that Donald covered that. He talks about stocks, he talks about bonds, he talks about money market funds, he's talked about REITs, he's talked about land by itself. And mm -hmm. um, just in case, because of time, he didn't go into depth about bonds, uh, loaning money to the government, shares means owning a piece of a company, money market funds. Just in case you need more information, I have full guides on the wealthstripe.com, the blog, and the web, and the web Stripe YouTube channel, full guides on all this. So go there, and all this information is available for free, for free, by the way. So go there and get yourself educated and get started. All right. Agatha, so I, <laughs> Agatha, I would also encourage uh, for those of us because of uh, because of time, I may not have done reads justice. For those of us who've not got an opportunity to learn enough about reads, Agatha has done a fantastic video. I, I believe the only one in Kenya which covers extensively. You know, which covers reads extensively. You can also watch that. It's on our YouTube channel, the the Wealth Time. And mm -hmm. it, it guides you, it teaches you about REITs, the technical aspects of it, and then brings you to the various types of REITs available in Kenya and how you can invest in them. Okay. As we wind up, there's a very important question from Helsi. Can we see yeah. the performance of the shares of, I, I believe she's talking about this REIT, uh, the Econi, mm -hmm. right? Can we see the performance since it began in 2013? It didn't begin in 2013. So first of all, Donald, clear yeah. that. Right, yeah. Yeah, so the, 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 yes, the regulation, the REIT regulation was rolled out in Kenya in 2013. The Econ REITs were launched in February of 2021, which was last year. Uh, we, we, we achieved a return of 9.8% within, you know, those 11 months. Um, so there's, there's, we, are, we are happy to share with the Wealth Tribe the, the financials uh, for the last, you know, one year. I believe I shared that, uh, Agatha. You can probably yes. share with the team. Yes. I'll email them. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Um, and remember, there's also a calculator. Um, so yes. because Catherine is asking, how do you keep track of the investments made? First of all, um, on their website, portal.vuka, when you sign up, you'll be mm. able to access portal.vuka.co.ke, where you'll be able to see how many units have you uh, have you bought? How, how many units do you know? How much money have you invested? How much money is in your static wallet? All that information is there. At the moment, they don't have an app, but yes, you have that platform to see everything. Mm. Everything is out there in the limelight. There are no, they, they know there's nothing hidden. And of course, yeah. it's a calculator. I will share later to calculate your investment and for you to determine how much you should invest in order for you to get Y. In if, if Y is like ten thousand in terms of the dividends that you want to get. Um, Catherine is also asking: Is it better to invest in bonds or REITs? This is like the final final question. Right, uh, and and there's there's no right or wrong answer in that. I believe bonds are very good investment, um, mm -hmm. and, and and they give you you know punchy returns depending on the kind kind of bonds you want that kind of a uh, investment in your portfolio. Why? Because this is lending to government. It's relatively safe. The government's rarely default. You can count them you know, by the hand. Uh, so it's good to have some exposure in bonds. REITs yeah. give you, uh, you know, capital gain, you know, slow, steady returns over a long period of time. So it's a good way to build your investment over medium to term to long term. And uh, for bonds, uh, you get you get a coupon or interest payments, but there's no there's no capital gain, meaning that you get the exact amount that you invested at the end of that period, but you will have earned coupon. So it's different investment strategies for different uh, you know, uh, instruments or different products. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I have answered all the questions in the comment section. I believe there's no question I have left out. And if there's any, just let me know. Um, yeah, I have. I have asked all the questions and I'm so glad we were able to answer all the questions because the last time we did this, we were not able to cover all the questions. This was beautiful. Thank you so much for coming. Um, just to highlight a few things that I learned from Donald. Um, for me, I learned that, um, that 
you I should when I'm planning my own retirement, I should make sure that if I'm married, I should also plan my retirement with the consideration that my spouse might pass away. You know, so plan without your spouse spouse in mind. Plan for both, but also remember that it happens, death happens. Um, and then that the NSSF contributions for my retirement and my employer's pension fund is not enough. You know, that is not enough. It covers, he said it covers 20 to 30 percent of my expenditure during retirement. And so therefore, I should be able to ask myself, where will the 70 percent come from? You know, and one mm -hmm. of the ways he shared is investing in REITs. You can use REITs to, to cover the 70 percent deficit. And another thing I learned when he was talking about um, the employer's pension is that you know, if your employer says that I will be only be giving 5% to your pension, 5% of your income to your, your pension, it means that I am allowing my employer to determine how much money is going to my pension. So take the matters into your own hands. Do not, one, don't allow the government through NSSF to determine how much money is going to go to your pension because clearly it's not enough. And don't allow your employer to determine how much money you'll have during retirement. Take matters into your own hands because at the end of the day, you'll be alone at 65, your employer will have moved on with other 20, 30 year old employees. Um, and then remember that retirement is not about age, retirement is about your wealth. How much money will you have accumulated? You can literally determine how when to retire. You can decide to retire at 30, at 40, at 45, at 35. It What matters is the question, how much money do you have? And to answer that question, well, how much wealth have you accumulated? It's starting today and now. Thank you so much for honoring my invitation. Thank you, Donald, for teaching us. I have also learned. And thank you for hosting me, Agatha. Appreciate it. And, and thank you for the lovely audience. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, um, the World Tribe, for being uh, awesome guests, awesome listeners. Thank you for participating in this uh, conversation. I appreciate you for always honoring my invitation. You can live at your own pleasure. I will share the recording on the World Tribe YouTube channel. I have um, the World Tribe YouTube channel. I have shared the link on how to access that to join the reads. There's a link um, in the comment section. Just click it and start investing in reads. Bye. Donald, you can stop the recording. All right.